Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Chats with Children. I hope the sun is shining where you are. It was shining where I was, but it's got cloudy all over again. Anyway, the sun hopefully is shining where my guest is today. But today I'm joined by Scott Kenny, who is from C4 Limited. And today we're talking about small batch packaging. So, Scott, how are you, my friend? Is it sunny where you are today? <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Rizwan. Um, yeah, the, the the sun is shining for, for a change. It's... Um, few and far between here in Belfast actually so we'll, we'll we'll take it when it comes well I'm very jealous because it's been a bit of an on and off day today here in Surrey but anyway let's talk about small batch packaging but before we do that would you mind talking or, or giving viewers a quick overview of CIFA and also a little bit about your own background as well yeah sure um so CIFA we've been in the industry for um over 40 years now we actually came up with the first de-blistering machine um, and, and have a well-developed range of, of, of products with that. But that's kind of how the, the company was founded and, and started. Um, since then, we developed you know, some further equipment in blister packaging and also non-destructive leak detection um, and, and CCIT. Um, so yeah, I think as an overall view of, of the, the, the equipment side of the business, that, 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 that's the summary. Um, and recently then we, we have a, a new business venture, which is, I guess, really just trying to leverage the knowledge which we've gained over the past 40 years and um, yeah, try to support customers with a, a, a service type, type base as well. Right, okay. And your background? Um, so I joined CIFA as a mechanical engineer and um, joined about 10 years ago. Uh, I worked on that side of the business for about six and a half years. Um, really just, you know, designing machines, then in lots of tooling and um, flying all over the world, visiting customers, validating machines and, and, and things like that. And then, yeah, about three and a half years ago, I moved to the commercial side of the business and um, where I have been the area sales manager for Northern Europe and now involved in, in, in the new business venture. Great. OK, so let's talk about small batch packaging. So uh, over the last 12 to 18 months, what are the most common problems customers have been talking to you about around small batch packaging yeah so a lot of this stems really from from requirements from, from some of our current customers and um, they had approached us like i say you know over the past 12 to, to 18 months with um various different types of, of, of projects and, and different types of of problems that they're facing when they're trying to outsource these to to a service provider and um, you know some of those problems kind of just include, um, you know, working with maybe a high potency drug, which some, some providers may not really want to bring into their site. And um, CIFA does not operate a, a highly regulated GMP f facility. And um, so it's a little bit easier for us to, 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 to work with, with those types of drugs. And um, on top of that, you know, we've been working with customers for small batch packaging for stability studies and um, working with customers that have quite a bespoke you know, sort of package design, which um, conventional production lines would um, would maybe struggle just due to the, the size of, of, of the package. Um, and then on, on top of that, you know, we've been working with um, a number of customers really just on the proof of concept, you know, design, development, material selection, and things like that. Right, okay. So, so obviously small batches, uh, small batch runs have become more prevalent. So why are they more prevalent these days, would you say? Yeah, I think just in general, you know, there's 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 a general trend in the pharmaceutical industry that that's leaning towards small batch and um, both small batch manufacturing and small batch packaging. And on top of that, you know, when we look at, for example, clinical studies, you know, new drug applications and, and new clinical studies are, are growing at about ten percent a year, give or take, and um, depending on the type of clinical study, but it's it's generally accompanied by some form of stability work as well right and um, all of which require um, small batch packaging i think what we i'm sorry on top of that we have sort of patient compliance you know senior friendly child resistance tests and things like that and um, all of which again require just some some packs to, to trial um, and to verify that that design is is adequate and, and fit for purpose and um, i think on top of that you know the, there's certainly been seeing you know uh, quite quite a few more startups and um, maybe more in the healthcare and nutraceutical side of things which are you know maybe just looking for some proof of concept work and some you know pilot sort of batches and things like that right okay and what would you define as a small batch in terms of a maximum number because obviously 
if it's a small batch, the minimum number is not the issue. It's the maximum. So what would you regard as a maximum number for a small batch run? Yeah, I guess it's, it's you know, when we talk about small batches, it can be a little bit subjective. And ultimately, you know, we, we don't really have any constraints in, in that respect. You know, we, we don't really work towards minimum order quantities. And, and, and in terms of, you know, the larger you know, uh, yeah, well, what's a small batch for one person could be a large batch for another. So I think, you know, small batch for us maximum would be, you know, maybe half a million packs a year or something like that. Right, okay. And anything above that, you know, yeah, you're sort of in, in two line territory. Um, yeah. Right, okay. And and how can you then, with the services you offer, help those companies who only need a small run? Yeah, I think as, as a business, there's a number of different ways in which we can we, we can approach that. So, uh, of course, if the customer would like to, you know, to keep this internal, then, then we can simply supply them some equipment, you know, get their personnel trained up and, and allow them to, you know, to, to carry out that, that sort of process or, or that project internally. So there, there's no problems with that. And additionally, you know, maybe if the customer is, is just looking to outsource this, um, then there's a number of different ways in which we can, we can support them uh, and support that project and um, whether it's through sort of tooling and package design and um, you know helping the guys sort of navigate the the the, the wide range of materials and, and material combinations that are that are out there and um, we have a very flexible process he, here at CFIS so and um, we can you know Purchase pretty much anything that, uh, that 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 the customer acquires in, in any sort of given material and um, combination, um, and with that, you know, we design and, and manufacture all of our tooling in house. So, yeah, I think our our, our turnaround times and, and flexibility is um, is where we can stand out. Right. Okay. And I suppose that touches on with my next which was what makes your service unique? Because I'm sure there's other companies which are doing outsourced services already for small batches. So, what makes it unique in terms of what you're offering? Sure. So, yeah, although we may be, you know, a relative newcomer to, I guess, the, the services side of, of, of this industry, um, you know, we have been here for, for like I say, you know, 40 years, give or take. Um, and with that, you know, we've worked with pretty much every multinational out there. So we, we have a really, you know, we, we have a, a, a big wealth of understanding in terms of their, their requirements. Um, and yeah we're, we're really just looking to to leverage that, that the knowledge that we've gained over over the past 40 years and um, uh, i think additional to that you know what what we've certainly been finding f- from our customers is that you know other service providers um are, are not particularly flexible when it comes to the smaller batches and um, i think those businesses are, are are very highly driven by efficiencies so you know taking on you know if it's maybe just 500 packs for proof of concept or or 5000 for stability and um, it can be a little bit difficult for for some of those guys to, 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 to take on that work. Um, and get, you, know, you know, additional to that, we, you know, we have a, a wealth of, like, say, experience in, in designing sort of blister packs and, uh, and developing with, with different materials and, uh, and quite a large library um, of, I guess, previous packs, which, um, you know, which we've already designed and, and, and are essentially there fit, fit for use. Um, I think lastly, you know, we can, again, leverage, you know, some of our existing equipment as, uh, as well. You know, if, if you have a project for stability, we can, you know, we can look to non-destructively leak test all of the packages before stability. And um, again, just to minimize, minimize risk. Um, and if there's maybe some data points which, which weren't expected, then at least we know that, you know, that the integrity of that package pre-stability was, was good. Um, and, and then I think lastly, you know, we can use, you know, recovery techniques for with, with deep list on equipment just to, to make sure that there's, there's essentially no waste in the process. Right. Okay. Fantastic. And, and when you are sort of approached by a company on a project, what are sort of the main criteria or main questions that you normally ask them before you actually undertake that project? Yeah, I think the first question is, is really just to ask whether they have a requirement for that packaging to be done under a GMP environment. And, you know, there's obviously a lot, a lot of regulation um, associated with that. And so that would be the, the, first, the first question. And I think secondly, you know, we would really just get a better understanding of, of their requirements and their project and their time scales. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, uh, certainly as a starting point, that's, that's where, we would, where we would go. 
All right. Now you you mentioned obviously that there are trends which have driven um, small batch packaging. So, what do you? What are those trends, and how do you see them continuing in the future? Yeah, I think generally the, the the trend in the pharmaceutical industry is is, is certainly leaning towards smaller batch production, and um, you know I think we we see that a lot I guess with with gene and sort of cell therapies and, and those right. types of I guess new innovations and and um, you know how they sort of work towards it almost like a batch of one you know very personalized medicine and um, oh. which lends itself and um, you know very well obviously to small batch manufacture small batch packaging and. And, and kind of decentralized production as well, you know, rather than having maybe one large packaging site or a manufacturing site, which, which sure. deals with a certain geographical area, you, you may have, you know, multiple and multiple sites a little bit more spread out. Sure. So um, that's great. Thank you for giving me that overview, Scott. I mean, it's really interesting because like you said, the trend is moving towards uh, small batch manufacturing as well so it's interesting to see how you're accommodating customers and helping them with that um, so if people want to get more information where can they get more information about not just your services but learn more about small batch packaging in general sure yeah i think the the first protocol is is just our, our website and um, we've we've loads of great content on, on white papers and information there and um, sifa.com um, if you want to get in, in, in touch with myself, you know, you're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a message, no problems. Um, or you can email us at info at cifa.com as well. Fantastic, Scott. Well, thank you very much for going through all of that with me today. Uh, no I know this is the first time you've done sort of an interview <laughs> like this, so I appreciate you going through that. It's always nerve wracking yeah. the first time. So thank you. For that. You've done a great job. Um, yeah, and no problem. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found that interesting and learned more about small batch uh, packaging. If you've got any questions, then please leave them below the video for Scott. You can message him directly, as he said as well, on LinkedIn. You can go to the info at cifa.com and you can also check out the CIFA website, which link will be above the video. So as always, Scott, thank you very much for joining me. I wish the sun continues to shine where you are in Belfast all the way through the weekend into the weekend. Fingers hope, crossed, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, <laughs> and I hope the sun continues to shine where you are. I'm off to go and watch England hopefully beat Germany. My apologies to all my German connections, but obviously I really want England to win. So come on, England. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the weather. I hope you enjoy the Euros. I hope the sun continues to shine wherever you are. And until next time, as always, stay well and stay safe. Bye bye.